There we go. Yes, who would like to go first, please? Uh, I could go, Dr. Short. What are we talking about, the definitions? Yes. Um, well, I did a couple of words. I looked at, I think I was in the right phrase, premise and proposition. Am I in the right place? I can't hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, and I struggled with them um, and looking at the words. So premise is a statement that is made for the basis mm -hmm. of another statement. Uh, proposition is a statement that you make and those statements, premise is the statement that you make beforehand. Proposition is the statement that you're making um, after the premise so that it could be proven or not proven that that's what you're standing on. Okay, what pages were your words on? Uh, good question. I don't know, I was in the ebook. Oh, you don't, okay. Um, it was at the, at pretty much at the front of, so probably page, page 60 or something. Because okay. I was counting at the front. Yeah, okay, I need you to uh, uh, kind of find it for us, please. Okay, now, um, okay, so can I do that one more time? Because I want, go ahead, please. Want, give us the de definition of those two words one more time, please. Premise and proposition, they're both statements. And so premise is um, a statement that you present uh, in order. It comes before the next statement to see uh it doesn't have to be true or you know or wrong it's just the uh premise is where you are sending your argument out this was in something i was trying to find it that was talking about arguments uh and to see that this is where i'm i'm standing on this ground right here and i can't hear y'all can y'all hear me um yes we can hear you yeah okay that this is the ground that i'm standing on and so proposition is a statement that you kind of state with uh, clarity. This is how you feel. Now, people don't have to agree, but it's the statement that you're putting out to say this bed is red or whatever, and people can decide whether or not they want to agree with it. But they were both done in cases of art presenting arguments. Uh, does everyone understand that? I mean, Dr. Short, is there like something I was like, is it, is no, you're not asking. You have to ask her. She's presenting the word. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. So address that to it's, Apostle Moore. What's her name again? Uh, 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 Apostle Moore. Overseer Moore. Apostle Moore. Yes, ma'am. Basically, you were saying it's like a, a statement that you want to, um, like, for example, you have a, um, a position basically that you want to stand on like for instance um i want to legalize uh uh the uh, stop tobacco smoking but i need to put out this statement and uh, make the point of stand that i want to make about this particular issue why i want to present it uh and why I, and, and and state the reason i feel the way i feel about this particular issue that it's not a uh, good um uh, let's see how I want to word it. Uh, a good thing, that's not the word I want to use, uh, because of the damage that it could cause to one health. Some, something like that? Yes, ma'am. They both can't, yeah, they both kind of sound alike. And they reminded me of like a court scene. Uh, it's kind of how I saw it and uh, that the points were being argued. And so Thank they you. were uh -huh, presenting this argument and then the proposition is kind of what they were stating closer to the end to say, you know, I'm giving you this proposition that you either accept or do not accept this statement based on the premises that I gave you from the beginning. Thank you. I quite understand what you're saying. Okay. Anyone else has any questions on those two words from Apostle Moore? Okay. Let's move on. Anyone uh, we need someone else? We need at least several of you guys tonight. Because I, because you are getting a grade from this. This is your homework. You are getting a grade from this. 
So if I don't hear from you, then between this week and next week, then that's a zero. Who's next? Mm. I got plenty of ink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, you know what? I'm I'm gonna move on. I, I can't do this, okay? Uh okay, um let's move on. And um you will be getting a grade on your homework. If you get a if you get some email you don't like, go back to the video, reference to the video, you see why you got a zero, okay? Now, but I have to move on. Okay, now um now last week we put your masters and doctor people, we put you in two groups, okay? And we hope you guys are still working on that. We will present that to you next week. I'm going to share a video. Um, um, not a video, but excuse me, I'm gonna share a screen with you guys. And I'm gonna go over some things with you. Um, can everybody see the share screen? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, and you know, I, I'm gonna say this before I move on because uh, I, I, I'm 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 baffled with most of you being pastors and leaders. You you've done your homework, or I, I'm assuming you've done your homework, but you get in class and a spirit of fear, or nervousness, or something. And we done prayed about this multiple times. I don't know if I have to come out here and do a deliverance service before we have class or what. But this is this is crazy. It, it really, really is. This is this is this is not good at all. And we got guests on here tonight. This is embarrassing me, but at that, but that's okay. It is what it is because everyone was told to read something and to go forth uh, and do this. You don't have to do no more than what you understand. So if you only did two or three, that was it. All you had to do was look at two or three words, make sure you understand it, and the fact that you're able, able, not able to present it means that you didn't do your homework properly because you had a whole week to understand two or three words. And uh, you're not going to get no school, give you two or three words and tell you that's so you have to focus on, two or three. But in a way, okay, I'm moving on. Okay, look here, it says, my critique of fatalism and monoism was centered in the impersonalism of these uh, positions, a worldview in which the highest reality is impersonal, is incapable of uh, providing a basis of ethical decisions. I know this is a hard class. That's why I'm asking you to look up certain words and break them down for understanding just a few words. And if everybody take a little bit, do a little bit, if someone does two words, another person does two or three words, and this person there's two or three words we work together so, so that was my idealism behind this we do this as a group and not individual but i want to look at what the author is saying here i'm on page 66 of your ebook it says my critique of fatalism and again we're this is a course that's breaking down understanding moral ethics values and we we're, we're talking about right and wrong uh we're um we're talking about denotonologicalism and, and and technologicalism all these major words but again this book stresses about worldview how the world thinks now you know that we as people of God, as Christians, that we get our morals and ethics through God, that God tells us how to live. He tells us how we're supposed to act and react, that the word of God is our direction, it's our path, it does that. But for those that are the world, the question for us is, where do they get their moral judgments from? Where, how do they know how they're supposed to behave? And so there comes all kinds of um, a uh, uh, beliefs out there based off of how they believe. One of the persons that we talked about a lot that that told you how to get your where to get your virtue from and and how to get your virtue. Who was this person that said you get your virtue from blank uh, following a, a, a virtuous person? Who said that? Was it Aristotle? It was Aristotle. Aristotle was the one that said, if you want to be a virtuous person, then you need to follow a virtuous person. Aristotle believed that if you want to be a good person, then you must follow a good person. And so therefore, what is wrong uh, with that statement? If anything, uh, is there anything wrong with, with following a good person to be like a good person in Christian ethics? Anyone? Well, the one thing, 
you got to have an understanding of what is good. Okay. And everything, everything that look good ain't good. And if you don't know their character, how do you know that they are good? Okay, but what is the foundation of good? That's where good we quote. go at. We what should. is the foundation of good? Aristotle said the foundation of good is following, fi finding someone good, you become good. So he believed that man can be the foundation of good. Is that what? No, we have to follow the word and the example set forth by Christ. When we're uh, looking at that word, righteousness should be what we determine as good. Okay, so so we determine right, uh, righteousness, or in other words, we, we get the word right. So if we want to do right, right, that's where the word righteousness, they that do right, uh, come from that. So if we're going to do right, then and that come from God's word. So I'm going to ask this, is, is, is God law absolute or is it um, something else? Is it God's law, law is absolute. Yeah. Absolute. Okay, God's word. Is, but, so when we say God's word is absolute, what do we mean by that? It's unchangeable, couldn't, can't be diluted, you know. Um, okay, uh, okay, overseer, thank you. Okay, overseer, you've done real good, and you got your grade, and, and thank you for answering, and I, and I accept that answer, too. But now some of the rest of you got to work on your grade. Okay, so, and I've heard a couple of you, I got you on recording, because I'm going to go back and grade you back to, on who answered. But, again, I need everybody to answer multiple times after you did not give your word <laughs> or definition. You really need to do that in order to get some type of grade, please. So, Dr. Okay. Short. Yes, Dr. Short. Yes, uh-huh. But if the word states that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he changed not. Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be considered as absolute? He's not going to change at all, right? And that's what and that's what uh, overseer said that God is that God is absolute. That His law again will not change. Now, in saying that God's law will not change, uh, is is it impossible for certain laws to clash? Though, yes, Doctor yes. Short. Yes, yes, Doctor. Uh, 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 go ahead, uh, overseer. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. calling you everything. Man of God, got this. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Short. Yeah, um, there God uh, laws are some odd. Uh, I mean, they are definitely absolute because if He says, um, "Thou shalt not kill," that's an absolute because of uh, He said it that way. But now situations and, and like He said, uh, can cause things to change. Uh, absolute also is God. You shouldn't lie. But then a situation can come up where you have to lie but that mm -hmm. doesn't change the fact that it's still a, a absolute just that situation do come up uh, yeah, i'm looking at it that way okay anyone want mm -hmm. to, anyone else uh, um based off of what um apostle shannon just said dr short let me see if i can answer this god laws is permanent they don't doesn't change but uh, I guess I used the example that you used last week about uh, telling the lie when it comes to a particular situation. It's never still good to lie, but in a certain situation, because of God's grace, there may be a, a, a situation where there's danger and you're trying to protect your life. So it may be uh, that you uh, don't quite follow the law of God, uh, absolute law in that situation. But his laws itself will remain the same. Okay. Is there any one scripture that we can show where, let's deal with lying, where someone lied and God did not give them justice for their lie? In the letters. Rahab. Rahab, yes. And David. Uh, okay. Over not there, David, you got to hold off a little bit. Oh, I'm bit. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to mute my phone. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. I'll call you back a little later. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Rahab. Okay, so one person tell me what did Rahab lie about, but God did not give her justice for her lie. Where the where the hmm? where she hid the men, had them hide and go down. Where he the gave wall. her justice. He did not What's give her justice for her lie. In uh, other words, he did not punish her for lying. Go ahead, yeah, Reverend Rose. Reverend Rose, go ahead, tell the story, please. Oh, I was just saying, um, 
the, the men had came there <clears throat> and she uh, hid them and then let them go down by, I think, a scarlet ribbon. And when the men came to look for them, she told them she didn't know where they were. Okay, Basically. so. Dr. Can... Short. Yes, uh-huh. The, the other one is, I think about in Egypt, the midwives, when Moses, when they were killing the babies, the mm -hmm. baby boys, the midwives lied to Pharaoh, but God justified them because they spared the lives of those young uh, boys, uh, of the Hebrew uh, um, wives, I mean, women and stuff, when they gave birth, they said they came out so fast, you know, and they took a chance with their own life, but that's one where they lied, but it was to, first of all, not go against God because they feared God, and then the fact that they taking a human life. Okay, so we find that there are times when morals can conflict, when two morals, uh, thou shall not lie, which <laughs> is a moral. Then the other greatest moral ethical law is that we should do whatever it takes to save a life. G and we talked about this last week, that on the Sabbath day, keep the Sabbath day holy, which is an ethical uh, moral law. And we and so well did it, so therefore we have um what the disciples challenged Jesus. Well, hey, on it's the Sabbath day. Well, I, and I guess Jesus answered when they challenged him about the Sabbath day, and he brought up the situation uh, with two moral conflicts. You got an ox in a ditch that's going to die, and, the, and it's on a Sabbath day. Do you keep the Sabbath day and, and, and leave the ox in a ditch, or do you save the life on the Sabbath day? And so, <laughs> so the answer was, and we all came to the same conclusion, that we pretty much we don't have to come to it because God gave us the conclusion that you saved the life. So therefore, mm -hmm. breaking a so breaking a, a moral for a greater good is acceptable. Breaking a moral for a greater good is acceptable. Jesus proved that multiple times. Now, so and we have and so we don't brought up multiple uh, places in the scripture with Rahab, uh, with a with Abraham lying and saying that's my sister, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. saying, that's my wife. But with Rahab, the greatest thing about that, if you go into the book of Hebrews, God recognized Rahab as being a, a great heroist. Again, for, for what she did. He did not give her justice, you know, for, uh, but he recognized her, uh, excuse my puppy, but he recognized her again for saving those great men's lives. Anyone, question, mm -hmm. comment, or statement? Well, what is the Bible? I'm Wait. sorry. Why did the Bible say that all liars will have their part in the uh, of fire. hellfire? Right. And they're burning the, with, uh, yeah, lake fire. Uh, right. Lake, uh, well, they're and, burning and with a, fire and hell, uh, brimstone. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, we brought we brought this up last week, too, uh, because if, if I go on a job, and I'm going to answer that question more directly, but I'm going to go on an indirect way, and then I'm going to come back directly and answer. Uh, because Last week, I asked a question. How many of you have ever been on job and left early before your eight hours? So you left seven and a half hours, but you got paid for eight. You that's, That was a lie. I, and I would grant you 90% of most people have lied indirectly by going to by doing something and never finished it or taking credit for something you didn't do. But someone said, man, that was awesome. But you didn't do it, but you never corrected it. So, but let's go to what her statement of scripture says that every liar shall have uh, that part in the lake of fire. Also, the scripture says that we know that God hate. We know that Jesus also said, told the Pharisees, you are like your father, the devil, for he was a liar from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. Bible is very clear that God hates liars. The mm -hmm. point that we're bringing out, though, if a person tell a lie, does that make them a liar? No. no. Not unless they're habitually doing no, it. Yeah. Right. Continue, not unless you Hold on, not unless you are a habitual liar. Yeah. Now, we all can think of uh, of a time that we did something, uh, whether even someone said, well, Dr. Shaw, I committed an act of homosexuality. Well, my thought is how many times did you do it? Well, I only did it one time. I was curious and all this thing, this thing's nature. Guess what? Yeah. Many children do that. Many children experiment, but that doesn't make them homosexual or gay until that thing become a habitual and become a part of your character. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, in other words, we're saying then you are not a liar until you become habitual in that. Telling a lie is wrong. We're not justifying lying. Lying is always wrong 100% of the time. But there are times that God will not give punishment for that lie because uh, when that person had a greater good to, uh, for the purpose of that lie. But God yeah. never, God never said that, oh, well, your lie was okay. He never told Rahab. Nobody in the scripture were told their lie was okay. God just Amen. pretty much didn't say anything and just reward them for the good. Think about the saints of God. At the end of the day, if we all got justice every day, none of us will be here. Amen. No. No, not a one. Not one. So just not look at liars, but anything. We will mm -hmm. not be here. God does not reward us justice. We get we mercy in and the grace spirit. every day. Every yeah. day we get mercy and grace. So I just mm -hmm. don't want to just focus on lying because some people might be good at that, but when we are good at one thing, we can fall short in another. Yes. Amen. Amen. Dr. Okay. Short. Why did he tell us Dr. To Short. In the spirit? Excuse me? <laughs> Yes, Dr. Short. Yes, a uh, man of God. Um, when you was talking about Rahab, God didn't bless, the, bless her because of she lied, but he blessed her because of her mercy. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And so, and, and the beautiful thing about it is, this is why God is God. Because if it was man, then man wouldn't understand mercy. Man would look at, of uh, the law. And so what what is it what do we call it when people stick by the law only? They can only follow a law. What legalism. 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 There you go. It's legalism. The fur the Pharisees are very legalistic. And there are times that you cannot always obey the law because the law goes against the principles of God's greatest law and the greatest law of God is love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love is the greatest law of God. And any mm -hmm. principle that goes against love, again, is going against God. I don't care what law it is. So that's what separates uh, Christian ethics from any other world ethics or worldview is the love of God. So now let's look at fatalism. My, the first word I have highlighted here. My, he says, my critique of fatalism. What is fatalism? Anyone take a, what, what word is in fatalism? Fate. 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 Okay, you got fate. What is fate? The things, the hope. No, no. Things, the hope. It's you normally something, an event that may happen, a negative event that normally uh, can happen to you unexpectedly or uh, because of the path that you took. Okay, partially that part's a partial answer. Anyone else, what is fate? It's kind of like you 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 believe something's going to happen and you just really truly believe that it was meant to happen. Okay, yeah. that, that's even more this even more closer. Anyone else? The things are hopeful and not the fate. Thing. Yeah, fate. No, that's, no, that's a scripture okay. that has nothing to do with fate. <laughs> and then, like, and, uh, I thought you were we... saying fate. No, like, it's, it's, it's the belief that all events are predetermined. Okay, so she done looked it up. Right. I, I believe that all events are predetermined. Now, so that means, that's what's the point? I, if everything is already predetermined, then you're saying it's going to happen no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to live no matter what I do. My life is predetermined. And now I'm, I'm going to ask this: Are does the Bible says that we as Christians that our lives is predetermined? So, so uh, Doctor Short, so that's no, more like. What you're saying is our destiny, then. Is, is, right, is right. I, I, I de so does, does the Bible <laughs> teach that our destiny is predetermined? Yes. You know yeah, but we were predestined from the beginning in the past. Well, you know the plan right, he has for us. Hold on a minute. Hold, 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 I, I want to make sure I get this. Um, okay. What we have to understand, I'm going to take my time and teach this and explain this. There's a difference being, uh, between being de uh, determined, uh, predetermined, and predestined. Okay? 
when the Bible says, the Bible did not say that our lives are predetermined. That right. is totally different than predestination. Predestination, all predestination says that God knows the road that we're going to take, but yes. he does not determine the road that we take. You, We are free moral agents. Being mm -hmm. free moral agents, that means that there can be no predetermination. If there is predetermination and we are no longer free moral agents because we can't change nothing in our life, what's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I was born to go to hell. I'm going to hell on the way. So what's the point of me trying to live right because it's already predetermined I'm going to hell? Or I, I'm going to die of cancer. What's the point of me trying to eat right or not smoking because it's predetermined that I'm going to die of cancer? Predetermined does not... Uh, it says that faith is going to happen to you and there's nothing you can do about it. That's predetermination. Dr. Short, here's what I read on fatalism. Essentially eliminates a responsibility for our actions. If our actions are predetermined, we're not responsible for anything terrible, for any terrible things we do. It was all set out for us by faith. And then it says our God, so that's really not true by as far by where God is concerned. Okay, so this is fatalism. And there are many people that believe that you know, um, it, it was going to happen no matter what, you know, somebody got shot, well, it was going to happen in a way. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, no matter, it was, they just believe, and there are many Christians that believe it was going to happen. But again, um, if you run out, if someone run out in the street right now and get hit by a car, they were called that, well, it was going to happen in a way. They were, they were going to do it. They were going to die that way. Uh, and so, but according to scripture, then we are free moral agents. You don't have to die uh, stupid if you don't want to die stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, uh, my a gospel song, you don't want to be, you don't have to be a liar. But anyway, uh, but fatalism says, again, uh, uh, you're sick. What's the point in going to, to the doctor? Because what's going to happen to you is going to happen to you anyway. It's already uh, predetermined. But predestination says that God knows what you're going to do before you do it, but he yeah. does not predetermine what you do. You make that choice. Okay, do, you, do you understand the difference? Yes. This is what makes him omniscient. Omniscient means that God is all knowing. No he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. He doesn't determine what you do tomorrow. But he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. And the reason why, the, the beautiful thing about the fact that God is omniscient, he knows uh, today and tomorrow. This is why many times we don't get the punishment that we should get because God is looking at where we're going and not necessarily where we're at. Mm -hmm. If God had punished, can you imagine if God had punished Peter for lying? Look how many times Peter lied three times in one night by the fireplace. But God did not punish him for those lies because he didn't look at his presence. He looked at his future. That's another mm -hmm. way we kind of forgot. Peter lied for the time. I don't know him. I don't know those people and they cussed. <laughs> yeah. But, yep. but that is uh, that is huge proof that the mm -hmm. but the mercy and grace of God is greater right now than the justice of God. Mm -hmm. because nobody lies three times in, in that well I ain't gonna say nobody because you got some habitual lies but people lie three times in just a matter of seconds probably hey man say I, you were one of them he's no one yes you were you were one of them no one man you I seen you with them then Peter cussed but God still made him a great again bishop over one mm -hmm. of the early churches used to mightily mm -hmm. Even though someone could win his back, because man would have win his background, said he don't deserve to be a bishop. He lied. That would have been man doing that. Mm -hmm. But man don't have the mercy and grace. Okay, so, um, okay, let me look and see what, oh, boy, what time is getting away from me. Okay, so, so uh, uh, any question, comment, statement thus far? Yeah, Dr. Mm -hmm. Short, so with, even with Peter uh, uh, Lyon, could that be where situ situationism come in? Well, Peter's situationism, Peter, 
a uh, situation that had nothing to do with saving a life because his there's we can't we don't see nowhere when Peter lied that his life was being threatened. Well, I, the only reason I said that because he was lying because he didn't want to lose his life. Well, but we don't, but we don't have evidence that because that the people that were sitting around the, the camp for would have took his life. They were just seeing like common people too. Okay. I think he was more embarrassed. I think he, but you know, wow, I've been following this man, and now he's dead on the cross, and we're running, and we're running around, you know, and, I, and and who we were following is no longer with us. It sounded like he was just embarrassed because it looked like the church is falling apart before it gets started. Um, uh, so. But uh, I, but there's really no evidence that he was that his life was threatened or because he wasn't around the soldiers. They're, they're, those guys that okay. were around that camp are don't seem to have been soldiers. Could it be okay. for fear? It might. I believe it was some type of fear, but fear of what? No, Doc, like being killed. Get being killed by who? By the gang that was around. There was. There was no gang. The Bible just see, and that's what we don't want to put into the word. What's not there? He was just sitting around the campfire, taking it away. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's not add to it. He was just <laughs> okay. sitting by a campfire, and more than likely, if he's sitting by a campfire, oh, he's man. around people that he was familiar with. Well, okay, there was you. somebody that was a little unfamiliar that says, "I seen you with them." But again, and then you got to recognize who's afraid. Peter, you know, we, we're talking Peter. We're not talking John. Peter was a fighter. He was the one that drew out his sword. So I don't think Peter was afraid of nobody. There's no evidence that Peter was ever afraid at any time of anybody. But I think, and, and th again, this is all uh, uh, a speculation, even on my part. My, my belief is that he was more embarrassed than he was afraid uh, I think he was more uh, just uncertainty, and I believe there was some fear there, but he wasn't afraid of them. If there was fear, he wasn't afraid of them. He was afraid that if they maybe went and got somebody, but those that are sitting around, I believe that if he's a Peter, I think he was, he would have handled that by himself. But that's just my okay. problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, seriously, think about it. When the soldiers, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus. Peter grabbed, I believe, grabbed somebody else's sword and cut the soldier's ear off. I mean, that's uh -huh. a bad, that's a bad dude. So I don't think nobody around the camp farmers made him feel afraid. His ear was cut off. Excuse me. Who said his ear was cut off? Oh, I Emma. Don't know. Emma, Emma. I threw under the bus. I threw under the bus. <laughs> no, Peter's ear wasn't cut off. Peter did the cutting. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. So look, okay. Oh uh, wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we got to get to the test part. Okay. I'm here. The test part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, this is the. This is. Uh, this is something we're doing different uh, oh, tonight. This is not. Those of you that's already been given an assignment to do research, the master and doctor people. This is not for you. This is for everyone else. Okay. Now, if you weren't a part of the masters and doctor group last week. Um, then this is for you. Okay, I need every last one of you that's not in that program to give me one question that's from page one of this ebook to page 80. Ask me the hardest question that you can ask me. The only thing about it is you have to know the answer yourself. Just one question. Everybody got listen to this on video. Dr. Shore asked for one question, and I need it by Thursday night, early Friday morning. All I need is you give ask me any question that you know the answer to. You can call it stomping, Dr. Shore. I don't care, but you have to ask a question. The only thing is, you need to know the answer. Now, that's part of your test. Okay, asking a legitimate question. Do not ask a question. Blank equals blank plus blank. Or God said blank. And he went to blank. That I don't want none of those questions. Mm. Don't ask a true and false question. So and so was a part of that true or false. No, I don't want that. Make this a written out something that I will have to write out. Make it a little bit challenging. No true and false and no fill in the blank. An open-ended question. It has to be a legitimate question. For instance, um, 
who was the father of Aristotle? Uh, uh, even the, and who did Aristotle get his training from? And then Plato. who was the person <laughs> Aristotle trained? Give me some examples. I gotta hear okay. what he's saying. That's Plato. Okay, you, your girl, ladies. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let, I'm just giving you um, a, a type of question. Aristotle was a great philosopher, but Aristotle was not the first philosopher. Who was a person that trained uh, Aristotle, and who was it that Aristotle trained? And uh, so that can be a question. So that, but don't make it too simple. Just don't give. It, it has to be something with a little depth. Don't make it a baby question. Because if you ask me a baby question, I'm gonna reject it. It is too simple. Let me give you a simple question. Uh, uh, Aristotle uh, was a what? Philosopher, don't don't ask me something that simple, okay? Uh, Pluto uh, uh, taught who? Aristotle. Don't ask me that. I'm not, that, so please don't ask that. Give me something in, in depth. Uh, was Aristotle or atheist? What what um, what aspects? What? Give me several proofs that Aristotle was an atheist. Now, if you could do something, name seven different types. Uh, Okay, this is somebody getting bounced out. Name seven, seven, seven types of this. Or Dr. Short, name six types of that. All, but all I need is one question from you. Now, I'm going to send my answer to you probably in about a day's time. Okay, I'm going to send it to you. And if my answer is not right, I need you to send me the right answer. If my answer is wrong, if my answer is only partially right, I need you to send me the part that is right <laughs> and tell me where my answer is wrong. Okay? So I could be testing you by giving you the wrong answer, seeing if you're going to correct it. And if you don't correct it, you're going to get the answer wrong. So you really have to pay attention to my answer. So Dr. Means, Short. Yes, ma'am. What pages are we doing it from? What page to what page? You can answer me anything from page 1 to 80. Okay, thank you. And just need one good question, but it has it can't be too simple because I will ask you to send me back another question and that's where you don't lost time. But if you do a simple question, it's only gonna take you five minutes to do a simple question and, and I'm gonna look at it pretty much that same day. So I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be on my P's and Q the rest of this week because because probably by tomorrow. Some of you should all get this assignment, just get it done. Good dig up a good question. A very good question and send it to me. And more than likely, you're going to have a reply back by Wednesday. And if, if you don't do good, you get a chance to do it again. But I need a good question. So don't wait till last minute and, and uh, Friday or, or Saturday and send in your question. Then that's not enough time. I can answer it, but you're not going to have much, enough time. Because if I send you a half right answer, you're not going to have enough time for the next day of Sunday to, you know, to even do that. So get this done tonight or tomorrow. You need to get this done tonight is one question. Okay. So now if you have any more confusion about what I'm looking for, don't call me. Listen to the video. I'm going to upload it tonight. It should be uploaded by late tonight or early in the morning. Okay. So don't call. So Dr. what did you mean? I think I'm very clear on what I want. OK, so more than likely, most of you will not get a complete answer. I might give you a partial answer. Then again, it might be totally right. And then you might think it's wrong. Then we're really going to have a debate. I'm going to tell them why my answer wrong, like y'all do me. <laughs> so question, comment, or statement? So this is for all of us. No, this is no, just for the, no. This is just for you guys. Already have a, a assignment. You guys are on. Um, you guys are uh, up the bat and starting next week. Chapter five, six, seven, and eight. You guys already have. I your thought assignment. it was seven and eight. Excuse me. I thought it was seven and eight. No, but no. I, that's the other group. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but this is for anyone else that's not in those groups. Okay. okay, so you have yeah. from page one. I mean, this is the easiest test that you're probably going to take for the rest of this year. Give me one question. It's, it is easy, but it, you're going to find it to be just a little teeny bit challenging. 
but I'm looking forward to it. And and think about this. I'm working just as hard as you guys are because all y'all are sending your question to one person. I have to send my answer to seven or eight people. So don't. So please get your uh, questions to me early so I can uh, get my work done. Okay. All righty then. So now, those of the master and doctor people, you're uh, you're going to be up next week, and you have at least two weeks. If you don't, now I want to reiterate. I said it before. I need you to summarize <coughs> those chapters. What you give me should not be longer than a chapter itself, because you're doing a summary. So it shouldn't take the whole class to do a summary. So if you already got six, seven, eight pages down, that's not a summary. Uh, I want to, a summary, breaking down the basics and giving understanding. But don't, you shouldn't be up there 15, 20 minutes. It's, that's not a summary. Amen. Uh, it don't take a book to explain a book. <laughs> uh, but, but seriously, though, that's what we're talking about. It don't take a book to explain a book, OK? So I'm going to let you go because some of you are going to get your work done tonight and send me my first question. So that means I'm going to have to get this done. I, I, I'm going to send in my answers. I, I challenge you. send me a question tonight. I challenge you before I go to sleep. More than likely, I'm going to leave my little door open a little bit. More than likely, you're going to get a response tonight, okay? So, so, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and kindness. We thank you for these great people. And, God, we pray that you would strengthen them, dear God, and bless them, dear God, to get their assignments done. And, God, we thank you for, even for our guests and those that's on tonight. God, we ask that you will, dear God, give them illumination and revelation and, dear God, comprehension understanding. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Give me a few more, uh, again, an hour or so to get this uploaded. And if you need to refer back to it, you please uh, feel free to do so. Amen. God bless you. Okay, we'll Amen. see you again. Some Good of night. you will be seen on Wednesday night. God bless you. And some on Thursday night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. God bless.